Recently, I saw this tweet. A colleague pointed me today to an insane exploit primitive if you control a PHP include function with the fixed .php extension and no upload and a link to a blog post here. Now, I don't know if you caught that, but that means the local file inclusion vulnerability that you might come across in some web application pen testing, but leveraging that LFI all the way up to remote code execution or RCE because of the server side processing that PHP does. I've never heard of that. I think that's kind of cool. Normally you'd have to do some like log poisoning techniques, but it sounds like you could do it without that in this case. So here's this article. Here's the write-up, here's the blog. Seemingly old, I think 2021 is the date here, but look, this is in a language that I don't understand and can't read, so I will have to translate this with Google Translate. But the anchor that is included in that tweet actually brings you to this section of the blog post, hex six, some ingenious use of paircmd.php. Oh, and by the way, hey, before I get too far down the rabbit hole here, let me say credit where credit is due. This is up to uh, Phyton. I don't know if I'm getting your name right. Phyton XG. You can find this user here on Twitter or X, whatever. And hey, one great cool folks uh, putting out some great research. And I do see them sharing a whole lot of sweet PHP little challenges or gimmicks and techniques that are worthwhile to see. Anyway, apparently there's this pair cmd.php or ppecl or pair files. PECL is a command line tool used in PHP for management expansion, and pair is a class of peel reliance. I don't know if Google Translate is just really getting this wrong here. <laughs> but here's the kicker in version 7.3 and below, this was installed by default. 7.4, it does need to be naturally turned on or set as configuration value rather than it just being set out of the box. So let's keep that in mind. That does sort of limit or narrow the scope here and that, okay, this technique could be used in PHP version seven in those lower versions. I know we're up to PHP eight by now, but I don't know, how often do you tend to see this? And especially for the sake of capture the flag, maybe version seven is out and about. And hey, we can play with this because look, any official like PHP release especially in Docker files, we can just spin up our own Docker image with that version seven or lower, we could actually kick the tires and see this in action because pair will be installed by default and it's going to be in a static location, typically user local lib PHP. So I'm sure you've always seen like a PHP info function call and the output that's returned and rendered on the web page when you actually get to call that function. You'll see some of the like server variables and configuration settings. Ultimately, PHP info will still showcase the variables argc for like the count or number of arguments, argv for the values and a little variable server with a dollar sign underscore server namespace and argv to retrieve those. Turns out you could actually kind of play with this because if you can see those argument variables being processed and they showcase the code here, like within the source code of PHP to handle this, you could actually try and track down the query string that's included in an HTTP request and see that actually get passed to server argv or the variables and values passed as arguments and parameters that you can actually see in PHP info. I'm probably doing a bad job of explaining this, but even the RFC showcases the script command line, the section 4.4 here, and it digs into how the the variables that are passed into get or head requests for URI could literally be kind of included in that argv listing. It sounds like there are some idiosyncrasies on this though, but even then there are some other uh, discussions and analysis on that. We could kind of just stage and test out, can we actually see these argument variables being included in PHP info? So let's hop into Kali Linux and see how we can play with this. I'm inside of a virtual machine here, but I'll make a directory for me, just PHP, and let's build up a little Docker file. Let me create a Docker file, and I'll say from PHP version, what, seven point, what did they say? I think it was like 7.3 and below, but we can just use like static flat 7.0. And let's actually copy a app uh, directory that we'll go and create. And then let's bring everything inside of that into var www HTML. So we'll serve and host our own little cheeky PHP server. We'll start with the command being PHP, and then we'll use tack s to serve and 0.0.0, .0 all the way on port 8000 on all interfaces. So, hey, here's some quick, simple 
Docker file to just let us design an app that we'll create and stage it in to var www html. We should actually make sure that that is the uh, location that we start to serve from though. So let's set that as the working directory. Now let's go ahead and make our app. So I'll move into that directory as I've created it and let's create just a simple index.php. Here I'll just say index page, super dumb and simple. And then let's create some PHP code where we can try to do local file inclusion. Let's just create this vulnerability in a simple like standalone sandbox environment for us to play with this. Ultimately, we could check if we have a get variable set like, uh, I don't know, file. And then we should actually check if that is set. So we'll wrap that around. And if that does actually exist, if that is set, what we'll do is we'll just include that. We'll go ahead and include the variable for dollar sign get our file that we include. That should make things pretty easy, right? We could actually create another PHP info.php page so we could go ahead and see that. Uh, let me just stage that super quick, just calling PHP info. And with that, we have our super simple and small application. Let's go ahead and try to build our Docker file. Let's do a Docker build. Yep. PHP LFI to RCE in the current directory. Let's stage that. Oh, little gimmick when using copy with more than more source, the destination must be directory and with a forward slash. Okay, uh, sorry, let me go fix that up. Our Docker file just needs a forward slash at the end here for our copy command. Now let's Docker build one more time and that will go through. Let's go ahead and Docker run tack P to map the port 8000 on our container and the host together. And let's run that tag Docker file. Okay, now we can open up our web browser, move into Firefox here. Let's go to localhost port 8000. And here we are on our index page, right? If I were to go into the URL and actually supply a question mark to say, hey, I want to pass the HTTP get variable for our file. Say we could load the etc password file, right? Hey, we have local file inclusion and we could grab whatever we wanted to out of uh, the files here, just simply reading them. But let's go check if I go to to that PHP info dot PHP. Uh, file that we created, we could just simply control F or search for our argv variables. And here's that register argc argv configuration. But if I continue to search for this, here you see our server argv. Now this is an array, but if I actually pass in the, I don't know, say our anything following the question mark, we should be able to see that down below. Control F for argv one more time, and there we go. Here are our elements of the array with anything being passed in. Now, okay, easy enough. We validated that first part of the blog post. And look, you've probably seen this in tons of times before, whether you're playing capture the flag where, hey, you can find a PHP info page, or you've got some local file inclusion, but you need to bring that to an actual full-blown reverse shell or command access. I think that's one of the cool things that we can apply this to is especially a lot of those capture the flag scenarios. And hey, by the way, if you uh, really love some of those capture the flag competitions, look, I am going to be hosting a game uh, alongside Sneak. I'm co-hosting this Fetch the Flag event for October 27th, uh, coming up soon this month. Just a 24-hour game. We have a lot of really cool challenges along the lines of the same, hey, web vulnerabilities you might be able to take advantage of, or binder exploitation, or cryptography, all the classic Jeopardy-style challenges, and all those different categories. Would really love to see you there, where it's going to be a ton of fun, and uh, I'm excited about the game. I hope you join super cool prizes in the lineup, Nintendo Switch, lots of swag and the glory bragging rights. So hey, totally jump in sneak.ctf.games. Would love to see you in the game board for the 27th. But let's get back to that blog post because we know we have local file inclusion. We saw that test with our etc password sort of file parameter here. But one of those interesting files that we could access is that pair cmd.php file that lives in user local PHP. Looks like they showcase it here and we could check out some of the things we might be able to do with it because, hey, if we include it and it is PHP code, that code will get executed. So we could actually try to run it and maybe we could pass in other arguments since we know we can control that from the PHP info output. Does that make sense? Let me show you. Back in our little Kali demo here, we know we have our anything array passed in for our server arguments, but let's get back into the terminal because look, say we actually got a super super quick shell inside of the context of our Docker container. Let me just do a Docker PS super quick so we know the container ID here. Let me try to actually Docker exec tag IT and the container ID and bin bash. So that way we have a shell 
just quick and easy within the context of that Docker environment. Now we know that in the user local lib PHP directory that we have this pair cmd.php and we could just straight up run that, right? We could do PHP user local lib PHP pair cmd.php invoking it with the PHP language. You can see here's all the output, here's the help, here are the arguments, here are the things you could pass to that program, all the commands that you could run with it, and we could actually pass these as arguments, right? So a couple of the interesting ones we might be able to mess with are other things that could create other files, like ooh, config create, create a default configuration file, or we could dig into all the source code here and see if there's anything that we might be able to even analyze or break. We could just cat it all out here for one thing on the command line. I'll copy and paste all this code, and here it is, here's the script. Pair, the PHP extension and application repository. Now bear in mind, the author of that blog post has already done the hard work for us, digging into a lot of this source code here and just kind of poking and playing at the different arguments that we could pass to this file. But we'll come to find out that the config create command or arguments that we pass into this pair cmd.php script, if we actually invoke that by using our local file inclusion, right, this file parameter that needs to be the actual parameter that we know we're using for our local file inclusion technique, say we got to read that file and then we pass in other parameters to say, hey, here's some content that I actually wanna write into a whole nother file. This is super cool. Now they showcase this here in Burp Suite, but I'd like to be able to script this out a little bit more. And I'm cognizant though, that we use some interesting and peculiar uh, characters, right? The ampersand will always mean different variables, but because we need to have these less than and greater than symbols for the PHP syntax and the question marks in the mix and the plus signs could very well just be space characters that are URL encoded. I don't know if I trust this as something that we could copy and paste into like Python requests syntax. So just for the sanity check, I wanna be sure to send this as like a raw HTTP request as low level as possible. With that, I'm totally gonna to take the easy uh, cheesy way out and I'm just going to ask chat GPT, please give me Python syntax to send this raw HTTP request. And I'll copy and paste all this in here and let's see what chat GPT works for me here. You can use Python's built-in HTTP client to send raw HTTP requests. Below is the code to send that. And looks like, hey, we can specify the HTTP connection to find a path and a couple headers that we probably don't need. We just care about the URI here. So let's see if we can get this to work. I'll copy and paste this and let's build out just a hack.p script, right? Let's go ahead and add our shebang line. Let's change this host and port to be uh, localhost 8000. We could probably do this with arg parse, make it nice and easy for us. Uh, we likely don't need these headers so I can nerf these out. And let's clean this up so we can see, hey, let's go to our index.php, pass in the config create argument to that pair cmd.php script, saying that we're gonna be referencing that with the PHP code because of our local file inclusion parameter, and then specifying, look, let's write PHP PHP info to temp hello.php. Let's do something different. Let's do something like, uh, I don't know, can we do like a echo one, 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 or whatever? Something to prove and validate that we have our own code execution. Let's save this script and let's get back to our terminal. We have a couple things running here. We know that we have our actual Docker file running up on the top. We have a session inside of here for the actual container. And let me actually just take a look at our temp directory. Nothing in there other than pair right now. But if I were to create yet another session down below, let's try to run our hack.py script. I'll fire this off. It looks like, okay, we actually hit the server here. You can see the request come through. And let me ls in temp one more time. There's our hello.php file that has been created and now we could actually call it because of the local file inclusion. Get back to our browser. Let me change this to go to file equals whatever, our temp hello.php. And oh, we have an unexpected echo. Well, okay, at least we know that we have our code in the mix. We could try to manipulate this and actually say, hey, let's create a command variable where we will actually, I don't know, pass in the PHP syntax that we want to put in place here. And then let's use like a, I don't know, an F string or format string in Python to actually say, hey, let's modify this to probably like a system command, right? 
hey, if we wanted to actually get code execution, we could pass in another argument that we could use to actually be executing raw shell commands. Uh, and I like to wrap these in the die syntax or that function. So that way, hey, it, they won't accidentally duplicate over and over again in any of the output. And, and maybe, I don't know, it'll clear things up for us. Let's try to run that one more time. I'll fire it off here. We can check out in our temp directory, hello.php is there. Can I actually cat that out? Let's display it here. Cool, I move this up a little bit, but you might just be able to see the syntax to run our command. Let's see if this will execute. Let's get back to our temp, hello.php, and look at this. System cannot execute a blank command because we haven't actually passed in our variable, but let's do C equals ID. And now we can see here is the output of of the ID command. We have code execution all from that simple local file inclusion. Now we basically have a web shell. We can run commands, we can do whatever we want, but I don't know, we could get a reverse shell with this if we wanted to, right? Let me go ahead and just check my IP address for Docker. It's just this 172.1701. Let's grab a super quick reverse shell syntax from rev shells. And yet we can go ahead and paste it to that IP address on quad eight, that works just fine. Let's go ahead and copy this syntax. And I'm actually gonna stage that in a single quote string here because I like to use bash to actually invoke this. I'll use use bash tax C to call SH and that way it's wrapped around. And let's go ahead and actually echo that out to base 64 uh, and encode it. That way we could get simple, like, hey, all principal characters out as our payload. And we could try to execute this and see if we can get a callback. Let's split this up here. I'll go ahead and use netcat lnvp on quad eight. So we have a reverse shell listener on the left-hand side. And let's go manipulate our script to now post a whole nother request to just, hey, stage the command that we wanna run. Let's paste in the base 64, just so we have that in a little bit of a placeholder. And let's go ahead and copy and paste the path that we wanna hit and change this to, sure, our index.php, but we'll change this to say, look, I wanna specify the file to be the temporary web shell that I've just created, our temporary hello.php script. And I also wanna set our command to run to be echo our, here's a new CMD that we can just specify is our base64 syntax. Echo our CMD, pipe that into base64 minus D to decode it. That way we'll get the regular real reverse shell syntax. And then just pipe that into bash. We'll go ahead and make that get request. And I guess we can copy and paste all of this here or just move our connection down below. Actually, maybe we'll just create another connection, whatever. We can copy and paste and grab all this down. I know we're using uh, HTTP rather than request, so it's a little bit clunky. But let's see if this can fire off and get us a reverse shell. So let me see. Everything is still running. We're going smooth. Let's try to run our hack.py. And no, I broke something here. Oh, taking a look at the errors. It looks like it doesn't like me having the spaces in there. That will need to be URL encoded. Let's see. Can I add the plus sign in here or will that break stuff because the base64 includes a plus sign? Let's try it out. Try that. Mm, it staged it, but looks like it wouldn't fire because our base64 is probably broken. Let's try to URL encode that. Uh, let me import URL lib and I think parse. Yeah, parse is what we need there. And then let's modify our command to actually be quoted. So that is URL encoded uh, and properly and the others are A-OK. -okay. How about that? Run the command yet again, and there we go. Take a look at that. We've got a reverse shell, and we have successfully completely staged just from regular, I don't know, pure, simple local file inclusion. Even if it maybe had the .php file like appended on, we could probably still work with that. Maybe we could play with it. But look, we have a shell and we can do whatever we want. Here I could see, hey, what director am I in? Hey, I could go ahead and read all the files in the file system. Maybe we could cat a flag if we were working on a capture the flag environment. But that trick to use the pair CMD PHP script and then create a fake dummy config file with our own injected PHP syntax and then using local file inclusion yet again to invoke it and run it could give us some of that server side code execution. And that will let us do whatever we want. <laughs>
Now don't forget, this is only for like PHP version seven ish or whatever, but still a very cool technique that maybe you didn't know on how we could take LFI to RCE within PHP, which is some of those techniques. Again, kudos, credit where credit is due, Python XG and some of the great work that they did, I think put that all together and shared it for the rest of us. But I do hope that's something you can use in capture the flag competitions. And hey, maybe you'll see some of it as part of the sneak fetch the flag game that I'm hosting on October 27th. And I would really, really love to see you come register and play sneak.ctf.games online. And again, it's going to be a ton of fun. Lots of great challenges on the way. And I hope to see you there. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I'll see you in the next video.